Margaret, may the God of hope give you the fullness of peace. Good afternoon, everybody, and I invite you to be seated. As Margaret's remains is here before us, we represent her long life of faithfulness to the God by placing Christian symbols on the coffin. So I invite Sister Primula and Romana to do so. Primula will give us just a little commentary on each of the symbols. For Margaret, the word of God was her source of strength and hope. She nourished herself daily by listening to the word of God and allowed the word of God to sink in her whole being, thus giving life to all. Shall now place the Bible. As a missionary, Margaret was ready to go anywhere and to anyone to announce the good news. 
She loved the life she had chosen and remained faithful to her commitment according to the constitutions of the Franciscan Missionaries of Mary. We now place the, our constitutions and the crucifix. Thank you, Sister Primna and Sister Romana, who are her community here in Putney. And I invite now Sister Lillian, who is a provincial sister, to officially welcome us and just give a resume of Margaret's life. Big welcome to all of you. It's lovely to see so many of you here. Welcome all of you to our parish church of Our Lady of Pity and St. Simon's Stock here in Putney as we gather for the funeral mass of our sister Margaret Taylor. A special welcome to Margaret's family from Scotland and from Northern Ireland, her nieces and grandnieces. Welcome also to those of you who have worked with Margaret and assisted her in any way over the years. We welcome also to those who are joining us through the webcam, on computers and television sets. I think Lena and her husband and Moira Brennan will be with our sisters in Paisley and our sisters in Ireland and Australia and many other parts will be uh, joining us today. I want to thank Father Tom who is um, leading us in our Mass of Thanksgiving for the life of Margaret and our farewell to a much-loved sister, friend, aunt, colleague and confidant. Thank you also to Father Ola who is replacing Father Michael at the moment and to our many other priest friends who are joining us. Margaret was born in Glasgow on the 27th of August, 1940, to Mary and William Taylor, of Irish-Scottish background. Margaret was their ninth child and rather unexpected, as her mother was then 40 and had assumed that her childbearing days were over. Margaret was adventurous by nature, always ready to accept a dare more interested in sport and enjoying herself than in study. But this began to change. At 18, Margaret heard the call to become a missionary sister and travelled from Glasgow to Berkshire, where she entered the Franciscan Missionaries of Mary. After pronouncing her final vows, Margaret trained as a nurse and midwife before being missioned to Malaysia and Indonesia, where she worked as a midwife, both in a Sunta hospital in Petalinjaya and in the village clinics, a mission that she loved. In 1975, Margaret returned to Glasgow, where she trained as a health visitor, working in Glasgow, Aberdeen, and Dryder in Wales, while also being involved in vocation ministry and the province leadership team. In 1988, Margaret began her travels again. This time she was asked to go to Liberia, where she worked as administrator and medical officer of St. Francis Hospital, a, a, a mission she also loved. Uh, relationships were very important to Margaret, as we all know. After this, she returned to the UK to be involved again in vocation ministry and spiritual direction. In 1995, Margaret followed an MA program in the US in Santa Clara in counseling and psychology, which led her from 1997 to work as a counseling psychologist and facilitator. She ran workshops both nationally and internationally, while also providing spiritual direction and retreats. Margaret saw her life and her ministry 
as one of healing, as a midwife assists bringing new life into the world, her purpose grew into being a midwife for others in their pain, helping people to become true and free, to give birth to Jesus in their own lives and in the lives of others. Margaret valued honesty, an honesty that wants the best for the other and not just ventilating. She spoke about learning how to say what may be unpalatable in a way that does not diminish and can be received by the other. She said, you catch more flies with a spoonful of honey than a bucketful of vinegar. At, at one time, Margaret was asked, what advice would you give to someone seeking a more authentic life? Her answer, to be real, to weather the ups and downs of life, and know that your purpose will be revealed through both. Not to wait for the ideal moment, but to enjoy life and start with what you now know and allow it to open other doors for you. She said, the past is history, the present is all we now have and lived well will shape the future. Margaret, as we know, was someone who always gave 100% and going the extra mile was second nature to her, while also living life to the full and enjoying laughter and humor. Relationships were always very important to her. She was a woman of deep faith and personal wisdom was warm and non-judgmental, with an openness that embraced all. Her going is a huge loss for all of us. We thank God for her very full life and her presence among us over these years. We thank you, Margaret, with all our hearts. Thank you, Sister Lillian, for bringing life, Margaret's life alive in us again, because I think she lives on with us and through us. So I invite you all to stand for our opening hymn of the Mass. Margaret loved music, she loved song, she loved singing, so in, we honour her in that way.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome. Mr. Lillian has welcomed us, but I welcome you again. Because that's what Margaret would want. She was a woman of welcome. And today we gather that the Lord may welcome her home into the fullness of his glory in heaven. I welcome our concelebrants who have joined us here on the altar and people joining us on YouTube, wherever it be, throughout the world in different places. I suppose Margaret evokes memories. And the Eucharist is about the memory of Jesus being present to us to lift us, to carry us, to journey with us. And we bring our memories of who Margaret was in our lives as she touched our lives in many, many different ways. So maybe just as we begin our Mass, let us just go inwardly into our soul's space to bring memories or a memory of who Margaret was. How maybe a word that touched our lives or a phrase she used, or a smile she gave. We just bring that to the Lord. And we bring Margaret's human journey, and our own human journey, to the Lord as well, as we ask his peace and his pardon in his presence to come to us. As we pray, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin. May he bring us to everlasting life. set a limit to this personal life so as to open up an entry into eternity. We humbly ask you that by the grace of your mercy you may command the name of your servant Margaret to be inscribed in the book of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We sit and we listen to God's word from the scriptures from Nadine who will read our first reading from us. This first reading was the reading the morning after Margaret died. And I think there's beautiful images in it as we listen to it. This is the first reading from the Song of Songs. I hear my beloved See how he comes leaping on the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle, like a young stag. See where he stands behind our wall. He looks at the window, he peers through the lattice. My beloved lifts up his voice, he says to me, Come then, my love, my lovely one, come. For see, winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth. The season of glad songs has come, 
the cooing of the turtle doves is heard on our land. The fig tree is forming its first figs and the blossoming vines give out their fragrance. Come then, my love, my lovely one, come. My dove, hiding on the cliffs of the rocks in the coverts of the cliff. Show me your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your face is beautiful. The word of the Lord. upon the harp. With a ten-stringed lute, sing him songs. Oh, sing him a song that is new. Play loudly with all your skill. His own designs shall stand forever, the plans of his heart from age to age. They are happy whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. In him do our hearts find joy. We trust in his holy name. Let us stand and greet the gospel. of David, who opened the gates of the eternal kingdom, come to liberate from prison the captive who lives in darkness. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, 
Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, good afternoon again, and welcome. gospel we have just heard. I think Martha's reaction to the death of her brother Lazarus, in a sense, I feel it captures all of us who knew Margaret, our, a sense of our reaction to sad news that broke on the evening of the 20th of December and came more present and more alive in the days after. Our sense of shock and disbelief and loss. Because somebody who had been so much part of our lives and so alive in life and so alive in our lives was suddenly taken from among us. Martha captures that for us. But I think Martha's faith, faith, faith too captures why we gather here and the purpose that is at the root of our lives. We gather because we believe in that resurrection. We gather because we believe too that Margaret believed mightily in that resurrection. Not just at the end of life, but all through life as she brought new life to many different people. She believed in the life beyond this life. And so, in that sense, our Christian faith is able to hold the paradoxes of life together for us on a day like this. The effects of her, we losing her, our physical presence, and the reality of what the new life is for Margaret. The effects that sense of loss for Margaret, that eternal gain. Our sense of parting, missing that physical presence, the smile, the voice, missing that. But in a sense, for Margaret, that real homecoming into the glory of God, meeting her sister Maureen, meeting all gone before her, our sense of sadness, Margaret's sense of eternal joy that is ongoing. We all, from time to time, saw that joy shine through a face. That joy is eternally in our heart, in our new life with God in heaven. And summed up in those words that we read in the gospel. Those who believe in me, Jesus' own words. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Martha said, yes, I believe. We say, yes, we believe. So in the paradoxes, we have that hope, that eternal hope, that vibrant hope that helps us.
to soothe our sadness, to soothe our loss, to soothe us as we go and let go of Margaret. Eric Erichson, the German philosopher, he summed up life as, I am what survives me. What I leave behind is not engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others by how I live and love. Margaret loved and lived life to the full. And she certainly wove her life, her life's wisdom, her life's learning into so many of our lives that she touched and transformed through her presence, through who, is, through who she was. Her fate, as Sister Lillian says, was a living and a live fate. She gave that aura of belief, of giving birth to Jesus wherever she could. And she brought that, that God that she first came to know in our head, into our heart, and through her life, and into every relationship that she touched in our lives, and how she touched so many people's lives. The Holy Spirit's work in her transformed her life, but she became the transformer of many, many lives. I got to know Margaret 11 years ago, 12 years ago, down in Margaret in Kent, she came and gave a course there on human sexuality. And she was so ahead of her time that I remember all the participants there, in a sense, brought life, lifted faces, and, and, and brought a new life there. And I was lucky to be able to go to Cold Ash on a number of the courses there. She'd asked me to help out, to be there, to say Mass, to pull it together there. And that was... That was an amazing experience for me, enlightening, transforming, uplifting. How she I kind of brought together the intellect, how she brought together the emotionals, how she brought together the spiritual into a oneness, into a wholeness that is you and me, and how she, in a sense, brought that to all of us and enabled that and facilitated to happen in so many of us being just there in that sense. She had that great honoring of the human experience. And in that human experience is the Lord living. I think it was Socrates said that experience, deepen, experience deepens when we reflect on it. And how true that is, because it enabled us just to reflect on our personal experience through the mirror of the gospel that she brought into our lives. And in that sense, you know, she brought that message that we're never separate from God, only in our mind blocks that we put together, that God is in every breath we take, in every sinew of our being, in every blood cell of our being. And that sense of the incarnate God through Jesus being there for us. Margaret had so many gifts, so many gifts. Her presence, her presence was powerful. When you sat with her, when you brought something from your life to her, how dare you sense, you had that sense of trust, of space, of security, that I know for me and for many, maybe unlocked many inner barriers, and blocks and prisons. And what were stumbling blocks in our lives becoming stepping stones to inner freedom in our lives. That was her to me in many ways. She had that fully, she was a fully alive woman, alive with a depth of wisdom, of insight, of integrity, of fearlessness. Nothing could surprise her, would surprise her, or shock her. In her life's journey, she had been through stuff herself, and had come through stuff herself. As Sister Lillian says, her advice was, in the ups and downs of life, keep going, 
The Lord will bring you through it. The Lord will work out. The Lord will bring you new insights. And that was her in so many ways. She had that inner courage to face difficulties. The difficulties in all her mission in life in different places that many of us probably never know about. But every so often maybe over a, a gin and tonic she would share. She would share the depth of what she had been true on that journey and how powerful that was. And you know, as we gather here today, as people join us wherever they are throughout the world, memories, thoughts, experiences, being with her, they come flooding to mind. We ask the Lord to embrace the height and the depth of them this day and wrap that market in the glory that they will bring for her. I like that saying, what we are is God's gift to us. What we become is our gift to him. And certainly we experienced the giftedness of Margaret's life in many, many different ways. There are the three G's of our life that I like to think about. Gift, gratitude, generosity. In those three words she fleshed out as she lived her life. The gift of herself that she developed, that she stretched. The generosity of our life to share those gifts with many of us or put them to facilitate many of us. And the gratitude that she had for life to the Lord and in the situations of life that he brought her through. And I like to think of her mission with many different communities as the three Ds. She'd draw out individual talents of people she draw together those talents of the group together. And she'd enable the group to try and draw upon them. Put them at the service of the community, at the service of people. In that sense, isn't that what Christian community is really about? That growing and pulling together our giftedness as individuals, our giftedness as group, and putting them at, at the service of others. So today, as we remember Margaret, think of the words of Walter Scott. He was asked the question, is death the final sleep? He took a bit of a pause, and then he answered it. He said, no, no. It is the eternal awakening the eternal blossoming, the eternal maturing, the eternal growing and flowering into the fullness of all that God desires for us into wholeness. A beautiful image of what heaven is like, what the glory of heaven is like. And isn't it strange but ironic that in the morning after she died, that that should be the reading coming up to Christmas of Song of Songs, because it captures Margaret in so many ways, that beautiful reading, and the beautiful images of the Lord coming, coming from the mountains, as it says. The mountains represented in the scripture all as the heavens. The Lord coming from the, the heavens, lifting his voice, and saying personally to Margaret, Come now, my love. Come now, my lovely one. Come. See, the winter of your human living here on earth is over. The new spring of heaven is dawning before you. So come now and experience all you've tried to live and all you've tried to achieve. Becoming fully alive here in this fragrance of heaven. And so, as we remember Margaret today, this was the greatest gift that any of us whose lives were touched by her, who knew her on a very, very deep level. And it's a question I kind of ask myself. How can I allow some gift of Margaret to live on in me and live on through me 
and put it at the service of others. Maybe if we could sometime maybe reflect on that when we think of Margaret's life, the qualities that touched our life, can we transform other lives through that? And I just finish with a quote that was on the headstone of one of the early presidents of America. And it kind of, just four little lines in it. I think it brings Margaret's life together for me. And it sums up her life. Life's work, well done. Life's race, well run. Life's prize, well won. Then comes rest eternal. Margaret, may you be dancing gloriously with the angels in heaven. And may you be around that heavenly banquet. And may the Holy Spirit be pouring you a spiritual gin and tonic. And may one of the many radiant memories and radiant smiles you give us resonate in our hearts eternally. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. So I invite you now to stand and I invite Maureen and Margaret and Claire to come forward and lead us in the prayers of the faithful. God our Father, we are here at the conclusion of one life, though with sadness, but also with hope. And so we bring to you the prayers that we hold deep in our hearts this day. For the Holy Catholic Church, for Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and for all bishops, priests, religious, deacons, and laity, that we remain true witnesses of God's love and mercy, we pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord graciously hear us. For our dear sister Margaret Taylor, washed by the water of baptism, and anointed with holy oil, that she may be led into the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of those who are sick, suffering, or in any kind of danger, that they would experience the healing power of Christ's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our family, that we may be consoled in our grief by the Lord, who had wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith and to bid farewell to our dear sister Margaret, that we may be gathered together in God's kingdom, may we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we bring these prayers, spoken and unspoken. We bring our memories. We bring all that comes to mind this day into your presence. Through the power of Jesus, who is our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. So we'll be seated now, and we'll have our offertory procession. Invite uh, Lindsay and Marie and Leontine to bring the gifts to the altar.
So pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine, that our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Margaret. On our funeral day, we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have afflicted her, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone, he accepted death so that we might all escape from dying. As one, he chose to die, so that in your sight we might all live forever. And so, with the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you made them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, he took the chalice and he gave you thanks. He said the blessing and he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with your Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Margaret, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. Remember, Lord, your servants, Margaret, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died 
and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So at our Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that, with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. And we just acknowledge each other's presence as we come here this day. In the Lord's presence we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the Lord Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
So for Holy Communion, we come up the center and down the sides. body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Are you
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Margaret, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joy of the resurrection. We ask this through Jesus, who is our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for a few moments as um, Yvonne, on behalf of uh, nieces and nephews of Margaret, will, will say a few words. Good afternoon. My name is Yvonne and I am Margaret Taylor's niece. I'm one of 17 nieces. Um, we also have 26 grandnieces and nephews and 30 great grandnieces and nephews, so we're quite a large family, having come from um, Mary and William Taylor back in Glasgow in all those days. We live in Scotland, Ireland, the States, we've travelled to many places, probably it's something that's in our, our DNA, as my Aunt Margaret used to, to travel lots as well. Luckily enough, we have seven of our family here today representing our family in conjunction with the, the family of the Franciscan missionaries of Mary. She joined you in 1959 at Coldash. We all have great memories of Aunt Margaret, firstly through her parents and then the delight of being able to have your own relationship as you get older and have an adult relationship and not be being told what to do and say because we were a lot when Aunt Margaret was about when we were all young. My personal memory is go back to Coldash and it was absolutely my honour last night to sleep in Aunt Margaret's bedroom and in one of the pictures in her bureau there was a picture of her on our final vows with my gran and with my mother. It was, it just was very special. I was there as well with my dad, being kept out of the way obviously at that stage. I think I'd have been about four. So my memories go back as far as gold ash then and being mesmerized um, by, the, by everything that was going on. All the sisters in their beautiful robes. Um, and I suppose because I was quite young, I was really taken with the farm, <laughs> and I do remember Sister Raymond running the farm down there, and I would run down and see her. Um, I just couldn't get the fact that a sister was milking a cow. <laughs> just, it wasn't something I was really prepared for, but it was just absolutely lovely to see. There's another story about the cows in the barn, but I'll save that for a lot later. <laughs> Following her general nursing registration, Aunt Margaret then came up to Scotland and she did her midwifery in Bells Hill near Glasgow um, with Sister Dimna Higgins, her dear friend. Um, during their time off, if they could get the shifts at the, at the same time, they would always be around our, our homes, um, either, well, anywhere in Glasgow in Glasgow and, and we always had a fantastic time. Guitars were always there, there was always music and just a lot of hilarity just as they were in, enjoying that. Soon after that, when Margaret started to, to you know, be posted out into the missions, um, off to Malaysia and Jakarta. So she really brought the world into us. You know, we learned a bit about geography. My mother used to sit us down and say, well, here's where she is, and have a look, and we're on this island, and that's Java, and there's Jakarta. I mean, I can remember all these things um, as a child. And I, although it's lost now, I do remember finding um, a cassette tape. Her mum got us, myself and my brother, Raymond and Paul, to all speak in the, into a cassette for Aunt Margaret and there was nothing like phones really in, in those days. And, well, there were phones, but we weren't phoning her. And we would send a cassette out and we would just record our special messages. And it was just, when I heard it, it was, it was lovely, but I'm quite sure it brought her a lot of joy just hearing our voices, being so far away from home and, and able to, to picture us um, where we were in Scotland. The next one I do remember is her going to Liberia, and because that was again a very different area for us um, in, in the world. And I can remember her being home one um, kind of late November, December, and she was going back to Liberia for Christmas. But I can remember going round so many shops in Glasgow with her, trying to find a suitable doll to take back for the crib. <laughs> I don't know if we succeeded, but we managed to travel lots trying to do that. She was always thinking, okay, what do I need to take back? What's going to give meaning to the community that I, I'm going back to? She was always on a mission. That's really kind of what I, I take from that. 
She was able to join us all at many happy family events, um, christening anniversaries. You could always hear her voice leading the singing, which was just tremendous. We shared lots of dinners and lunches and just anything that was going on when, when she was around. She visited her brothers and sisters all over the world, wherever they, they went. Um, visited Ross Trevor and Warden Point to see um, George and Nan and all the family. Um, and the girls gave a little insight as to how it felt when she was over to visit them. So I'll, I'll read their words. We never knew when we were growing up when Auntie Margaret would pop in for a visit. We didn't have mobiles or WhatsApps in those days. You would open the front door and she would be standing there and we were always on our best behaviour. Our fondest memory was when Aunt Margaret came with her guitar and we would all be sitting around and singing, her brother George on the accordion and the dog howling to the music. <laughs> if anything needed to be done, Auntie Margaret put on the wellies and mucked in on the farm. She even jumped in an old scooter and took it for a spin. She had a great sense of adventure. In the later years, Auntie Margaret was there on the end of the phone whenever we needed her, in good times and in sad times. She was a constant in our lives, and when she was in Belfast, she always came over to see and stay with us, catch up and you know, stay for as long as she, as she could. During COVID, when nobody was traveling, we just all had to keep in touch using our, our mobile phones um, to see how everybody was. Last summer, Aunt Margaret was able to stay for a few days, and we were all able to stay see her properly and catch up with a couple of gins. I have a theme going on here, but I'm quite sure it wasn't a problem. The girls just want to say thank you for being there for them and that she was much loved by everybody over in Northern Ireland. She visited John and uh, her brother John and Marjorie and their family in Seattle when she especially when she graduated in, or when she was living in California when she was in, in Santa Clara. She was able to travel up there and see them a lot. And in fact, at her graduation, my mum and dad, Kathleen and Joan, were there. Her sister Maureen, her husband John, and John and Marjorie were all there to, to share the joy of her, her graduation. They were extremely proud of what she'd achieved over there in, in her time. In Scotland, she spent time with us all. She just... We just had the call, Aunt Margaret will be in town, and we all just kind of jumped to to see whatever we could do. She made some trips with Lena around Scotland um, and just joined the rest of us for special meals in our homes. She just liked being in our homes with us just to see how we lived and where we were and make sure that we were fine. In recent years, a lot of our visits surrounded being um, looking in on Maureen, our, our dear sister. Um, she stayed with Maureen for years and years in her flat in Mount Florida and, and when Aunt Maureen moved into her, her, uh, the care home in 2019, that was where Aunt Margaret came to visit her, as indeed we all did. We got a new introduction with Chris and Liz and their family seven, eight years ago, which has been lovely and, and she took great joy in going out and speaking to, to seeing the family there and all the, the extended family and nieces and grandnephews as well. I suppose really Aunt Margaret was just Aunt Margaret to all of us and I've been incredibly humbled um, over the last day and, and, and hearing Sister Lily and, and speaking today about her and Father's home. We've learned so much more because when she's your auntie, she's your auntie and that's all she wants to be. She doesn't talk really, or she didn't talk too much about what she did, we knew in general, but it's only in listening to everybody um, over the last day or so, it's just, just she's really... Um, taking on a whole new <laughs> meaning really on what she achieved in her life and what she, how she lived and how she wanted to, to make that or to share with everybody. As a family we have all been much welcomed by the Franciscan missionaries of Mary everywhere in the world. I personally I think I should have been paying rent at some, rent at some point because over the years I've stayed in or shared meals in the Boltons from an early age, that's um, long gone. Kirkley in Glasgow, which was very close to the school I used to, to go to. I stayed in Ryder in Wales. I went there after I got my tonsils out, just after my 21st birthday. That was my recuperation. <laughs> it was very well taken care of. Um, I've spent a lot of time in Cold Ash, in Canning Town, Brixton. I even made it over to years used to in Rome and, and stayed with the sisters there, and that was just wonderful. Um, absolutely wonderful. 
we're very fortunate the, the cousins here today were able to join in Art Market's um, Diamond Jubilee in 2019. We had an absolutely amazing time. Art Market was celebrating 60 years along with two other sisters celebrating their milestones. Um, and we just had the, the best day. I'm sure Romana recovered after maybe a few weeks after that. That was a, a very old event to, to, to put on. Um, there was a cast of many and just such a great reception for us all. Um, and we all got to spend time in the gatehouse where Aunt Margaret had been living in. You know, it was a great connection for all of us. Our family and the family of the Franciscan missionaries Mary have been intertwined for over 60 years now. And that won't change. I'm, I'm hoping and praying it won't change. I know we'll not let that go. I can't begin to name individual sisters for fear of offending by omission, but thank you all for being Aunt Margaret's family, for being there at a very important, all the important stages of her life and, and most recently. Um, I know that must have been just awful, but it gave us great comfort to know that you were, you were there with her when it really mattered. We all carry our own memories of Aunt Margaret and they'll make us smile for the rest of our lives. Aunt Margaret, rest in peace. Thank you very much Ethan, for giving us a family glimpse into Margaret's life. So we've kind of married all the different parts of her religious life, work life, family life. So lovely. So invite you all now to stand for our final commendation and farewell. The Lord be with you. Dear friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Margaret. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. So we just take a moment to pray in silence and then we incense the body with incense as a symbol of our prayers of this day and of Margaret's life rising to God and we bless it with holy water symbol that in baptism she began life with Christ. Today may that life and may she be in the fullness of that life in heaven. Margaret, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you have eternal rest. 
Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And before we take Margaret to a resting place, we'll sing together our final hymn, and then we'll take her to her resting place.